Hey everybody, my name is Steve and uh, I work on old TVs I mean, you can see them behind me. These are the old CRT TVs and monitors and things that were around for about 100 years before the normal flat screens that you see today. So in today's video, I wanted to show off some older CRTs that are really more difficult at this point to get a good image into. So today I want to feature the whole journey of these CRTs. We're going to go, we're going to find these CRTs somewhere locally. We'll purchase them. And then uh, after we go and get them, we'll take a look and test some of these CRTs. And once we test them, we're going to take a few of those and actually restore those full sets. So it's going to be a lengthy video. And look, if you like this kind of content, uh, do consider you know checking out the channel. That is pretty much what we do here is work on these older televisions and monitors uh, that are in this CRT format. And uh, I appreciate you checking out this video today. And now let's jump over into the journey to buy some CRTs from Lucas. All right, so I'm in my lovely Mercury Grand Marquis, and I'm uh, getting ready to go for a CRT haul here, hopefully. I have found someone within a driving distance from me that's suitable, that has a lot of CRTs for sale right now. And uh, I found these on what might be one of the last good honey holes for finding uh, vintage CRTs in your area. And uh, stick around till later in the video, I'll explain more about where I found this lot but let's go ahead and fire up the old 97 Mercury and uh, head on down the road. We're going to meet up with Lucas and he had a few CRTs listed for sale on Facebook Marketplace. Now he does live out in the country, so we're going to need to go through a little bit of uh, the countryside here to get to his CRTs. Right now, I'm trying to. It's kind right. of like in limbo right now. I don't know if I should just give up on the other TV that I had, or yeah, this one. The. You know, are you interested? Well, I mean, the thing is, is I don't. This is so old that uh, I don't know, and it's a little bit. I would, but if it was smaller. Oh. But um. Just don't. I don't know. We'll see on this one. Let me get this one as a... Sandy out here. That's a good one. Should be on channel three, probably on channel four. Shut up. <laughs> you have them dual coming out dual? Yeah, like, I have a splitter in the Okay, back. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's an RF model. Oh. The old RF style. Right. They yeah. don't have any other inputs but RF, the antenna. They, these don't. Right. Cool. This yeah. one has an AV input in the front. Right. That's a little little bit better, easier, but no, that's good. They look good for RF, to be honest with you. Yeah. All right. So first off, I want to say thank you to Lucas for being so hospitable and allowing me to come in and, of course, test these CRTs. And uh, as I said, sometimes you go out in the country and you don't know what you're going to get yourself into. But thankfully, everything went well with Lucas. And I did buy uh, a lot of CRTs from him. And I'll show you those in a second. I did not buy that Zenith that you saw at the very beginning. It was in quite rough shape, had a lot of rust on it. And it was older and uh, just not something I was really interested in working on this time. But anyway, let's get back to the shop and see what we picked up. I just arrived back at the shop uh, after that awesome ride through the country. So behind this door, we have a Philips. What is this? 19 PS 56 C125 Philips Magnavox. CRT. This one does have composite and RF and looks like it's from 1999 right there. 
and that's the big one as far as size is concerned. Oof. There you go. Smart series, nice big bubble tube right there. And back here I have a this is RF only. What is this one? This is a Sanyo RF on the back. Oh. Uh just Sanyo, baby. Anna Mayhem was here. This is a DS 13430. DS13430. This one is probably the coolest of the three because it has the wood grain finish. It's super dirty though, but it looked great. It's a Sylvania. Uh, you do have like a display, so there is an OSD on here that's possibly we could hijack if we're lucky for RGB. There's remote control uh, ability with this one. Oh, let's see on the back here. Um, RF 13S401. 1991. So this one's cool looking. Finally, we have this one down here. 13PR12C221. RF. And this one is a Magnavox. Cole, do you have an opinion on these CRTs? <laughs> well, we saw, we saw, I think all three 13 inches inches work. Uh, or I did back in the shop. The only one I didn't test out was this Magnavox. Uh, let's go get some consoles and get a signal in here and see what we can plug in. All right, let's try this Dreamcast setup with composite video and the 240p test suite. And again, I've not even powered this on, so hopefully it's good. I, I trusted the guy. I didn't even make him power it on when we were at his barn. So we've got RF here. Hopefully there we go. We can get to AV by just selecting down. Ooh, look at that. So what I can tell right away from this screen is that we have uh, nice purity. So if it was if it had a problem, we'd see some blemishes as far as color all right well not too bad I mean we do have some definite wonkiness along this side and um, probably would need a remote control to adjust that at all let me see if I can get a better idea with this the monoscope pattern all right let's pull that up a little bit it's actually looks better on the monoscope pattern than it does on the main menu as it doesn't show the buckles is bad or the hooks that I call them over here on the edge that's probably because the horizontal deflection may be just too far out and a little bit over scanned for the capabilities of the tube or just the lack of hardware who knows still it's a pretty darn good image and we can go to color bars in here and yeah I mean for composite video this looks pretty darn good so let's move on now and try these other sets again um, and I'm going to show you how I'll hook up to those TVs. These remaining TVs are RF only as I showed earlier and there are many ways to get composite into an RF television set today. I'm going to use the RF Reflex and I have done a full video on this device this year and I will pin that right here if you want to check out a full review on this device. First I'll be trying out this other Magnavox. It's plugged up right there through RF, through that, the reflex. And I'm just going to swing it around here. Quite a few buttons here on the front of this one. Power it on. 
hearing a lot of interference. That's probably because this device is on channel four, maybe. Let's try channel four. There we go, yeah. I was just on channel, the wrong channel, so. Pretty good, wow. That's got a much better picture than I would have guessed. I didn't take a close look at it, uh, besides the little test that the uh, guy who sold it to me, Lucas, said run for me. So let's check out some patterns here. Oh, I'm picking up some noise. So maybe it's too loud. Anyway, monoscope pattern. Oh, we are picking up some interference there. So I'm definitely picking up some sound interference from something, but it looks fine right now. I'm going to try something different this time. I'm going to use this Neo XYX game, and I'm going to do that because this should have a Tate mode in it. And this particular set, while it's 13 inches, it's got a nice flat surface here, and it looks pretty stable along the back. If you look at the other side... That's where the mono speaker is. So I was thinking that this could possibly be a good set to use in Tate mode if the orientation will be correct on here. So let's just turn this set on first of all. And we need to get over to channel 4. Maybe on channel 3 still. Yeah. There we are on channel 4. It's definitely much blurrier. So we probably need a focus adjustment. Okay, so this has a menu here, and look at that, we can turn it to arcade mode, which again flips it, and that's good, that's the actual side we need it to flip to, so I'm not going to leave, I'm going to set it for that, and then I'm going to go back, but um, what I'll do now is I'll turn the TV off, and then I'm just going to pick it up right here with you. I've tried not to destroy it, flip it into Tate mode, and let's turn it back on and see what we've got here. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Wow, bleh, see, I still messed up my purity, so I was trying to avoid that, but it still happened, so what I probably need to do is demagnetize that. Yeah, this would be perfect for a fun little Tate setup. It's definitely going to need some work, but this one probably has one of the coolest, like, use cases since it's built with that. Oh, since it's built with the uh, speaker on the top now, if I can just get the magnetism figured out, <laughs> this is awesome. Well, interestingly enough, if I turn this on its regular side, the purity looks like perfect on it. There's no discoloration or anything. So um, hopefully it can handle that shift. Uh, might have to try to figure out something else with it, but otherwise it's still a really nice little TV. Last up is the Woodgrain Sylvania, which is my favorite set. Let's see if this guy did this right. He said that, yep, there it goes, it powers right on, okay. So he told me he was able to get a $1, it's on channel 3, hang on, let's see. So this was a remote from the cable company. Let's see if he can get it, if I can get it to work anyway. He said he was able to get it programmed, it might not work completely. It definitely works to power on and off. Oops, that's the volume. First off, let's get it on channel 4. I don't know. So the other functionalities are not working besides power. Interesting. So that guy might have just sold me on a bill of goods. Let's see if anything else works. No? Okay. <laughs> so this is another one we probably could just use in Tate mode if we wanted to, but I don't want to mess the wood grain up on it. So this lot of CRTs was purchased from Facebook Marketplace, and I still suggest that if you're looking for a CRT and you just don't 
really know where to go. Um, locally, generally, is a great place to start. And one of the online areas that you can still find some CRTs is Facebook Marketplace. So I like to check that out. That's where I bought these sets today and met Lucas and uh, had an overall good experience. And you can see the CRTs right there behind me. Well, those two particular ones are the ones that we're going to work on more now and we're going to feature the rest of this video. Uh, we're going to go in and restore these sets, get them looking as good as possible, and uh, we'll take a further look at them, test them out, and we're going to get into that starting with, I believe, the wood grain Sylvania. I've got a Sylvania CRT here, and I thought it might be almost criminal for me to work on this little CRT and not actually make a video about it. So I've decided to do that with you now. And I've been messing with this TV. It's RF only. And this is the best picture right here because it, do you see like these patterns and stuff in this picture? Now, this probably could be from the TV's comb filter. But this particular set seems to catch a lot of interference, even on the cleanest signal that I can send in there through RF. So what I've done, I've already recapped this thing and serviced it, but what I didn't do is I didn't reinstall some shielding on it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually open this thing back up. And I want to install this shielding. And then we're going to come back and we're going to kind of look at this uh, screen. These screens on Airzong show it really well. But I'm trying to make the little patterns go away. It could just be that this TV has those patterns and I really can't do anything about it. And it's just the interference it gets. But if this old shielding helps at all, we're going to install it and uh, find out if it does at least. This is our model number, SRW135-0101. Unfortunately, the service manual for this one is behind a pretty hefty paywall, which is uh, unfortunate, but we did some research on it, and I'll try to tell you what I found out here in this video as we go. This is our mono speaker. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open this thing up, and we're going to look inside. And uh, I will tell you that this thing's going to have an absolutely gigantic spark on the discharge. So stay tuned. That's about to happen in a second. Get the reflection of Zonk down there. If you look inside here, it pretty much looks the same as every other CRT that we worked on in the past. Uh, it's got a nice Chung Wei tube. That's a really nice tube for this set. Pretty solid yoke assembly here. Now what I want to really talk about before we even pull this uh, chassis out is that if you check out over here, this is where our power, main power comes in. Just got the AC voltage, right? There's no ground. It's just hot and neutral. And a lot of these high voltage, uh, the voltage comes in here and it stays really hot and high and uh, runs into the flyback and then it comes out of the flyback and sends high voltage and power throughout the chassis from my understanding. Now I might be getting some of this wrong so I apologize if I am but I just want to give you a uh, quick disclaimer about this television set. This is the only transformer in there and that's a apparently a horizontal, trans horizontal uh, deflection transformer and then you have the flyback transformer and that's really all you're getting and since there's no isolation of this power source right here and basically it doesn't have its own ground system, it's like a floating ground. And if you work on this set while it's powered on, you could really hurt yourself because it can ground that hot voltage through your body and create a ground. And then you're going to be like cooking like a goose pretty much. So I do want you to be very careful if you run into one of these sets and you think it's hot like this, especially like an cheaper RF television, proceed with caution. And just, if you're worried about it, take some pictures, send them, ask some questions uh, to find out. Now I'm going to just disassemble this to reinstall the shielding. Uh, but first I'm going to remove this anode cap and I'm going to set up and show you just the amount of boom 
that's stored up in this tube because it was running like five minutes ago. So there's going to be quite a bit of energy in there. So I've not discharged this yet. I removed the boards and got everything out of the way. And I am connected now to the main um, ground loop around the back of the tube. There's one strap remaining and it connects to the main grounds, but all that's been disconnected. And it, this is in no way intended as a, dim, uh, um, a guide on how to discharge a TV. I just really want to show you how much energy is stored in this little 13 inch set by discharging it in this manner. And then I've tried to increase the uh, shutter speed here and quality of film. And I've tried to increase the FPS and things like that to make this look a little better, hopefully on camera. Just wanna make sure I'm in the right frame here. Yes, okay. So let's see what we get. Ooh, yes, very big one. See if we get a second one here, right after that. Little, you could almost hear it, just a little tap. Let's see if there's anything left in this cap. Sometimes there's energy even stored in here. Nothing. There you go. Good little zap there. Well, here is our chassis. And I have removed the shielding because I was servicing... The area is covered with the shielding by installing a new capacitor kit here. But I was also trying to research these chips here to see if possibly there was a way to inject RGB into this set. Um, honestly, this is one of the first RF only sets I've worked on. Now the fact that it has a hot chassis already pretty much disqualifies it for being a, a good candidate for mux modding or really any rgb mod so i didn't really know that till after i had done some more research and talked to some uh, people who know a lot more than i do and found that out but i still had to remove a lot of this stuff to get in and actually like replace this capacitor here all these capacitors were covered in shielding and uh, so that needs to be done. So again, this kind of a set is not RGB moddable, unfortunately, because of that uh, hot chassis, number one. Number two, there is RGB in on this chip right here, but it's using TTL signal, or it's wanting that, so it's not gonna be good for that at all. And uh, there's no, you know, it's very difficult to think of a good spot to hit sync on this. There might be a good spot for sync, uh, but again, it's just too too far uh, cheap of a television, unfortunately, to actually add successful RGB unless we pretty much change the chassis or directly injected RGB through the neck board here, which is way too complex of a mod um, where you have to introduce a whole new drive settings, a whole new chassis pretty much along with the original to get it to work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reinstall all this shielding and hopefully that will get our signal to improve. I'm not sure it will, but we'll try it out. I've replaced all the shielding now. It's on there. I did have a little issue where this snapped off. So I just made some uh, little legs from capacitors into bridge legs there for that. And again, both those are completely shielded on both sides now. I am going to make an adjustment to this set, and I'll show you how I can safely do that in a second. But I specifically need to get over here, and I want to adjust this horizontal center. Now this can take a... One of these, Allen wrench? Is that what that's called? Anyway, it's, you know, I can stick this down in there and turn it. This one is apparently 7 64ths in size. Uh, because it's very difficult to spin that any other way. That's the same thing for all the potentiometers down here. You also can do vertical size, vertical center, and then each of these are drives and cutoffs for the color. So the three colors, red, green, and blue, can be adjusted right there. And that's pretty much it. There's like this AGC. Um, 
you can adjust to. And uh, that's really all there is. There's some tuner adjustments to here, but those don't really help too much. Well, here's the tool that's going to help us with this hot chassis. And of course, it's got to be something from B and K, and it's got to be about 25 years old. This is a isolation transformer tool that has a couple of outlets here. So you can get direct feed or you can get an isolated feed here, which is the one I'll use. You just plug this thing, it's pretty much a giant transformer. Plug it in, power it on. We're gonna set this to um, 120 because that's what we're gonna be using it as an American outlet, but you can vary between 140 and 90, which is actually cool on this too. I'll feed the TV out of this port and hopefully we'll safely be able to work on it. I've got it powered on now. You can tell it's, see the power comes out of there, straight into this isolation transformer, into the isolated slot, and then everything else is coming out of the direct feed for my testing equipment, basically my console right now. And that way, if I do short something, it won't blow up everything in this room. Hopefully it would just hurt the TV. So let's run the ROM and see if there's any difference in, first off, our sh shielding, if that's helped at all. I want to get down in here and see if that shielding has helped my signal at all, but I don't really think it has. TV still works and looks great, but I'm still seeing a little interference. I'm still seeing that like little bit of noise here. That could just be the comb filters again on the TV and also the extra filtering done by the console itself, but yeah, this one really shows it again. You can see it, that pattern back there. I'm guessing that's just artifacting and stuff from the comb filter mostly. I've gone in and adjusted that centeredness a little bit better. Kind of wanted it to match this Super Nintendo. I feel like Super Nintendo just doesn't look as noisy as the signal that's coming out of that PC, which actually is quite surprising to me. It just seems to pair nicely. There we go. Looks pretty good for RF, right? I think one of the most important things probably we've talked about in this whole video is just really be careful, especially if you're going to mess around with these older sets that you don't really know much about. Like I said, I really don't know much personally about RF only televisions. So my goal now is to try to add these into the research uh, pipeline, so to speak, to say, because there's a lot of these still out there. And I don't think that they deserve to just be thrown away. Even if you can only use them for RF, they're still a good use case for that but again to adjust these you have to be very careful you don't want to really poke around especially in one that is a hot chassis like this without the proper equipment and so definitely consider an isolation transformer those aren't particularly easy to find I had to buy mine broken um, off of eBay and then all it really needed was a fuse replacement but still um, you've got to be careful with these old TVs and uh, that's pretty much the message for today. I really like this TV. I will probably eventually sell it, though, at one of the conventions. So maybe you'll see it at an upcoming show. How about a little CRT bonus here for you? I have another 13-inch. This one's from Sanyo. And this was a little bit more scuffed up, at least on the shell. You've got a mono speaker there. 
and menu channel up and down and volume up and down and a power button that's pretty much it and I wanted to show this one because it too is just like the last one RF only and we don't even have a tube I don't I'm not even sure what this tube is which company made it but uh, this is just like the last one considered a hot chassis now, I did go in fully clean this board and actually serviced it some I replaced about half a dozen capacitors in here and uh, but this is like the power area over in this section see how it says power but the power mains come in and still it's it's got like a float it says it's <laughs> here's an interesting note down here floating ground chassis use isolation transformer for servicing so anyway um, I was a little unclear about this one I tore this CRT down with Lewis in a live stream and I'll tag that up here if you want to check more out on that but um, this guy again after talking with my CRT friends who know way more about consumer sets than I, they informed me that this is, again, a hot chassis and not going to be able to be modified for RGB. And uh, it's a little unfortunate, but it's okay. It's just kind of the story on a lot of these older sets. And uh, so what I'll do now is I'll throw the back of the CRT right here on it. Let's see if we can even, I don't even think I can get the exact model, well, no, I'm wrong. Here's the model number, a DS134301343 00 for the chassis. And this one is from the 90s, so it's about the same time frame as the Sylvania you just saw. It's interesting how they went with the wood grain, and this is just, again, the black styling on the case but it's been fully cleaned um, let me set up a demonstration I'll show you what the picture quality is on this one all right I've fed in a test pattern from the 240p test suite the monoscope pattern I'll show you a little bit of what the visual quality is on this uh, this is completely focus adjusted so the one thing I want to note is this is a pretty darn soft image like it's not sharp as far as like hugely sharp I mean it's it's pretty darn soft I also have a good like red bleed through on everything even after servicing uh, let's see what else we want to talk about the vertical shift right this thing's set for the proper aspect ratio but there's a vertical shift upwards and there's there's no vertical controls beyond just a single size adjustment there's absolutely no horizontal controls whatsoever everything is just set it and then once it's set it that's it um, i have not got the remote control for this model so possibly there's a sub menu in there i do not know about that and uh but i would be surprised if there is there could be though and that's pretty much it for this thing as far as image quality is concerned i did go in and correct the convergence along this side by adding two convergence strips right in here and again to use this just like that uh, said right there just like the board said I've got it run through my isolation transformer right down here same same deal as the other one got that running isolated on its own so there's no real threat to uh, that hot chassis damage in anything so that's good stable image. Uh, let me show you some other stuff on it. Well, this is it, everybody. I wouldn't say the image, again, is super sharp or anything, but on a soft console, like our friend the N64, it seems to work out well. Like, I'm actually running the RF adapter back there. Right there, and the RF signals fed straight into the television with a high quality RCA cable. So I've gotten a lot of the interference down. I mean, it's a super clean image for RF. It's just soft, a little soft, but it works out kind of right. Look at that. Right? I mean, it doesn't look super soft or anything. It's just not super sharp, but we're used to seeing on the higher end um, TVs and even pro monitors. But 
it's another CRT that deserves love. Man, just look at that. Way to go, Sanyo. I truly love CRTs. So actually, I haven't worked on those other two sets yet. They are still here in my shop. I just haven't had time to get to them. Uh, but if you did enjoy this video, please do me a solid favor and click the like button. Also, if you want to learn more about CRTs, please uh, check out some of the resources I'll have linked in the description of this video because there are some really great places full of awesome information. And finally, if you really love CRTs, do consider joining the Patreon account. Uh, we work on things like these CRTs, and it's really only because of those amazing supporters over there on Patreon, and thank you to everybody who does support this work on Patreon. Uh, but that's the place you can get in direct contact with me if you have personal questions about a CRT, or heck, if you even want to have a CRT serviced, you can send it into the shop. There's ways to do that, depending on the model and the problem and the services that you need done. All that is coordinated through my Patreon account. And in the next video, I want to feature some more CRTs that are consumer grade, but this time we're going to do some larger ones. They're all going to be 20 inches, and we're going to do modifications on all of them. So I want some S video mods and especially RGB mods. That's what we're going to do in the next video. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. What you say, Mr. Cole? Huh? Are you sad because you don't get to hang out in the new place as much? And you don't get to be on the show very much anymore? I know, buddy. I need to get you set up with your own dog studio. And your own dog CRT, right? What do you think? Yeah? I know. It's tough being a dog, isn't it? <laughs>